Between uninspired and unconvincing prose about disliking Empire, though he still found it quote-unquote respectable, whatever that means, he falls with, I th Kind of a weird quote out of context there. Respectable can mean a lot of things in this context. It's an essay about him rejecting imperial logic. Is this Hakeem? Yes. And yes, his logo is Lenin. His rant sona is Lenin. Thought that the greatest joy in the world would be to drive a bayonet into a Buddhist priest's guts. Hmm. Okay, now let's employ a little bit of critical thinking here. So this is an essay about him rejecting colonial logic and expressing his distaste for colonial logic. When we read this passage right here, is Orwell referring to a feeling that he currently has or a feeling that he used to have? Is this a rejection of previous thoughts and feelings that he's had, or is it an embracing of this position? Is he saying this right now to go, and I still believe it? You know, I thought the greatest joy in the world would be to drive a bayonet into the Buddhist peace crust, comma, and I still do, motherfucker. Is that what he's saying? I believe he's taking this quote in bad faith. He just might be. Again, my issue here isn't with, like, Orwell or defending Orwell. The main thing is, like, man, I wish people could do this shit in good faith, you know? I feel like I could construct a pretty good takedown of Orwell if I wanted. I just, you know, Hakeem is, is a tanky. So obviously, like, you know, he has, like, strong ideological biases that are going to inform his takes here. Mighty authoritarian of you, Eric. Hold on, if he hates the Burmese and uses these terms, then surely a self-proclaimed socialist would have even harsher words for the most notorious fascist of all, right? Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 what? Wait, 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 that is the biggest le- So wait, this essay, when was that essay written? Shooting an elephant. Har when was that written? Published in 1936. When, so like, is this gonna be like, uh, okay, did you know that in this one sentence he was describing his previous feelings towards the Buddhists in a negative way, but eight years later he said something that didn't sound as immediately negative about Hitler? Okay, all right, it's just dumb. Like, imagine cherry picking so hard that we're literally jumping not only from time to time, but from time to time, subject to subject, and then the first quote we're using is one of a position we're criticizing in ourselves. Why is Hitler here? Um, that's a good question. Why is Hitler here? Me at God. Let's have a look. I should like to put it on record that I have never been able to dislike Hitler. I have reflected that I would certainly kill him if I could get within reach of him, but that I could feel no personal animosity. The fact is that there is something deeply appealing about him. One feel- All right, let's go find the essay. George Orwell, Mein Kampf review. I, man, I should do a Mein Kampf review. So this is 1940, so this would be at least four years after he wrote the elephant essay. Okay, so control F, appealing. Here we go. One, f so I'm gonna continue this. One feels it again when one sees his photographs, and I recommend especially the photograph at the beginning of Hurston Blackett's edition, which shows Hitler in his early brown shirt days. It is a pathetic, dog-like face, suffering under intolerable wrongs. In a rather more manly way, it reproduces the expression of innumerable pictures of Christ crucified. There is little doubt that is how Hitler sees himself. The initial personal cause of his grievance against the universe can only be guessed at, but at any rate, the grievance is here. He is the martyr, the victim, Prometheus chained to the rock, the self-sacrificing hero who fights single-handed against impossible odds. If he were killing a mouse, he would know how to make it seem like a dragon. One feels, as with Napoleon, he is fighting against destiny, that he can't win, yet somehow he deserves to. The attraction of such a pose is, of course, enormous. Half the films that one sees turns upon some such theme. So, employing a little bit of critical thinking here, it seems like this entire essay at least this portion of the essay, is on Hitler's use of mass media and rhetoric to portray himself as a martyr uh, burdened by the infinite weight of the universe. Uh, appealing here is used in the literal sense, as in he designs himself to be appealing. It's very eloquently written. Yeah, he was, he was a writer. Did you know that? He's talking about the way Hitler has constructed his image. I would think the phrase, I would certainly shoot him if I saw him, would be enough of an indication as to his position on this. But considering the fact that Hitler was, at the time of his you know, life, legendary for being a powerful orator, it seems to me that this is an effort to express why he's such a powerful orator. You understand? Like, the point that he's making here is, okay, so he, this man deserves to be shot. But why is his message, why is the way he speaks so appealing? What about what he says? Like, how many how many leftists have you heard say 
Donald Trump sounds incredibly appealing when he speaks to the American working class. Have you not heard that before? Like, think for a moment. Can you not think of another example of a leftist saying this fascist, this enemy of the people is appealing in the mannerisms with which they speak? So Hakeem is just cherry picking parts of this essay to make his point. Yeah, I think he's being pretty overtly dishonest here, you know, but look at the last sentence here. Now that we are fighting against the man who coined it, we ought not to underrate its emotional appeal. See, we go back to that word appeal, appealing. This is a statement not on his personal feelings towards Adolf Hitler, but rather a statement on his optics. Why does he dislike Orwell? Because George Orwell didn't like Joseph Stalin. At least that's what I'm guessing. Feel no personal animosity. The fact is that there is something deeply appealing about him. One feels, as with Napoleon, that he is fighting against destiny, that he can't win, and yet that he somehow deserves to. Notice how the way Hakim is cherry picking these quotes, the way he's doing it is to make it seem like Orwell is actually endorsing Hitler because he's a dishonest piece of shit. Uh, as opposed to writing a broad essay. Like, you could e you could easily find, like, a lefty essay where they're like, uh, you know, and one speaks of the appeal Trump has with the uh, the Rust Belt working class. You know, uh, Donald Trump goes to the podium and he, you know, one feels as you as you listen to him that he really is a rejection of the deep state status quo. And then you, cl qu like, clip chimp that and you're like, ah, see, he supports Donald Trump. Nah. You know, how many times... Have you seen lefties on Twitter say, dude, Donald Trump is so funny, I can't hate him. Imagine somebody unironically quoting that and going, see, this person can't hate Donald Trump. They love Donald Trump. This is a Donald Trump supporter. You see that every day. I see that messaging all the time. Lefties say that constantly. But again, Hakeem's trying to be dishonest here, so. Dude, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, he's, he, with his rant sona, he's like, ooh, got him with that. <laughs> like, finds a two-second clip of Hassan saying, dude, I love Trump. And he's like, ah, see, Hassan loves Trump. <laughs> the simplest benchmark for any reasonable human being is to have a burning hatred for fascism. But apparently... Uh, yeah, see, we, they say Hassan is a leftist, but he said I love Donald Trump. You just heard it in that two-second clip. <laughs> Even that's too much for Orwell. Instead, in the height of World War II, he says the willingness to criticize... Clip, chimp, clip, chimp. I consider the willingness to criticize Russia and Stalin the test of intellectual honesty. Yeah, okay. See, I told you it was because he didn't like Stalin. You don't have to be very intellectually honest to criticize Hitler. Every imperialist in the West was doing that outside of Germany. Whereas leftists' willingness to criticize Russia and Stalin would end up being one of the great like tests of their intellectual credibility. Yeah, he's clearly here talking about, like, look, letter to John Middleton Murray, published in the Collected Essays, Journalism, and Letters, George Orwell, as I please. Who was John Middleton Murray? An English writer? That kind of a creepy Hannibal Lecter face here, doesn't he? You know what I mean? Wow, he, he did a lot of stuff. Oh, he was a Marxist. That's nice. Supported the small independent socialist party, a regional breakaway of the independent labor party. Again, like, if we're engaging in a little bit of... I guess, honest analysis. I think it's pretty clear here that he's saying that as leftists or as people with leftist sympathies, criticizing Russia and Stalin is our test of intellectual honesty. Like, would you really say criticizing Hitler is the test of intellectual honesty? We're like, that's the bar we're setting for leftists. Like, oh, I can tell this leftist is trustworthy, has good opinions, and, uh, you know, uh, 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 is intellectually honest because they dislike Hitler, the bar that I have set that definitely isn't a little bit too low. On the other hand, criticizing Russia and Stalin did end up being like a pivotal breaking point for a lot of lefties. <laughs> I don't like Hitler. Where's my PhD? Exactly. Me too. Hey, where's my PhD? I just have a bachelor's. Oh, hey. Yeah, and it still is. You're completely correct, Orbados or Orbados. The willingness to criticize Russia and Stalin is still, to this day, a test of intellectual honesty for lefties.